Solution for day 66, building a fully working calculator means that we do need to start by making some changes. Let's change the title of our window to calculator and let's make it a bit taller and a bit thinner. So let's go for, well actually let's go for something like 400 by 200 again and just check that it's working and looking all right on your screen. Looks good to me. I'm going to get rid of some stuff. I'm going to have my uh, label. I have it existing there and I'm going to have my button, but I am going to start that as being the button one. I'm going to get rid of my packs because my packs are not what I want. I want to lay this out in a very specific way. I want to add my, my answer. I'm going to start that at zero and I'm going to create my subroutine and I want to start by laying out the page. So instead of the text being equal to zero, the text is going to be equal to answer. And I'm going to do hello dot grid row zero column. The button is going to be the button for number one. So it's going to be actually, I'm actually going to call it one rather than button. I'm going to do one dot grid row equals one column equals zero and just check that that propagates properly a little bit more room there that looks good to me so we've got our answer and our first button now i'm going to set a subroutine called set answer and what that's going to do is going to take a value actually let's call it type answer because this is something a little bit interesting what we're going to do is we're going to work it so when i press a button it's going to add a button on the right hand. It's going to add that number to the right hand side of the value I've got just working like a normal calculator. And that involves a little bit of messing about because I need to global my answer for a start. And then I need to convert it into a string. Now the reason for this will become obvious in a second. That's because what I need to do is I need my answer to be equal to, and I'm going to use F strings to accomplish this, the value. So the answer, what it was before with the value now glued onto the right hand side. I'm then going to turn that back and then update the label. So that's going to be hello text equals answer. One's not connected. So let's connect that up. So it's button command equals type answer which of course that's not going to work because I can't feed it commands like that. So type answer is going to be if it's going to be that again, but instead of value this time, it's just going to add one onto it. Turn it back into the original and put it on the screen. So let's see if this works just to check it's working. Okay. Oh, I need my brackets there. So that is working. It's put on the right hand side, but I suppose the, the key thing is, no, that, that works fine. That works fine there. Happy with that. Yeah, that's good. So I am going to have to annoyingly have one of these for every single thing. So let's change this from type answer to type one. Then let's add this into it. Of course, one thing that we can do is if we want to pass arguments, we can use the Lambda function. This would be command colon Lambda colon, and then your subroutine with its argument. And that works a bit better if you want to use multiple arguments. So I'm using the lambda function to pass a number to it. I've realized I don't need to cast it as a string because if I'm using f strings anyway, I just need to turn it back into an int afterwards. So this is the button for one. So let's see if I can build the button for two now. So two, pass it a two, two. I'm going to move it over to column one. And I should have a one and a two now. Oh, let's put a two on the button. So I've got two ones. There we go. So that's working as expected. Let's fast forward a little bit and get the rest of the numbers done. Okay, three is a bit wonky there. Let's put that back into its place. Nine seems to have disappeared. Nine's down here for some reason. What's going on there then? Ah, there we go. There we go. So three, five, nine, six, four, seven, eight, zero, one, one. We won't worry about the fact that it's moving. It's not the end of the world. It's just the fact that this top element is making itself a bit of a pain by doing that. But let's add our multiply and divide buttons. 
Let's do add first. Add equals tk dot button. Text equals let's put a plus symbol on it. The command is going to be let's use lambda again. Um, calc answer. We'll pass it plus. Add dot grid. Let's put it on row one. Let's put it on column just so we move it a little bit to the right. So let's see where that is. Why have I got invalid syntax? What have I broken? Uh, there we go. So I've got my plus there now. Now let's go and write calc answer as a subroutine. So if it's a plus, what does that mean? That means I need to add the next number to it. So, so what I need to do, I need to set, we have to bring in some globals here. So we're going to bring in the global answer and last number. So we can access those. I'm going to set last number to being equal to the current answer, which is the value that's in there. Um, we're going to need to bring in operator as well. There we go. Let's call this one this op. So last number is equal to the answer. Answer becomes zero again and operator becomes okay so in a normal calculator we press the button it resets the screen so we've got a different number to type in so we do like 80 plus 30 and then we click equals so if we've reset those things we need to reset the screen and wait for the next option so let's see if that works 44 plus okay so 44 is gone, it's got stored somewhere else. And then we're on to our next number, 66, and I want equals. So let's put our equals button in. Let's put it in row three. I'm happy to keep it in column four, I think. So it's at the bottom there. What's in row three? Just the zero, so that'd be the nine. Let's put it in, in row four, so it's in line with the zero. And it's not gonna call calc answer, it's gonna do, let's just give it, answer and I don't even need the the lambda for that one now because I can just do that so let's write answer so I can't call it answer can I because I've got a global variable called answer let's just call it calc def calc so we need to do our massive list of globals again okay we need to work out where it is first so we need to say if operator equals equals because that's all we've dealt with so far then we need to say total equals last number plus answer and then we need to set answer back to what it was before let's try this nope invalid syntax on line 69 what's happened down there then missing the bracket here we go oh should be equals always remember to call your objects what they are right so 22 plus 33 equals okay something's not going right there so when i click equals is calc happening that's the important thing let's just check calc's happening we can check that quite easily by doing a quick print in here so we can check that 66 plus 33 so it's definitely calling the function because calc's happening there I made operator a plus here. So let's print out some values. Let's make that an F string. And let's print out last number operator. So we've got to see what those are when we click the button there in the terminal. Oh, right, okay. So that means that I need to have those under the global. Okay, six plus three equals. I've got those here. So what's the problem? It's probably the fact that they're not ints. Oh, and I'm making it equal to the answer, not the total. So let's try that again. Six plus three equals, and there you go, the answer's there. So if I press that again, you can get the same answer. Plus two. Hmm. Okay. So I do need this then to also set the last number value. So I need to set total to that. 
I need to set the answer to the total. I need to set that to the answer. And I think what that should do, hopefully, is allow me to do what I was trying to do, which is that, that there we go. And I'm continuing to add to the value of my original value. And that's sort of flipped, unfortunately, though, isn't it? So I think I need to do that the other way around. I need to do last number equals total. No, let's leave it as it is. It works okay. It works okay. So if I do 60, if I do plus, let's, let's start again. Hold on, right. Three plus two is that. If I do plus six, yeah. So it's continuing to work, which is exactly what I wanted. So the add button works. Let's do takeaway. Let's call it minus put it one to the right. It's going to have a negative on it. It's going to have a negative there. Is this going in the right place? Yep. Let's code it now. So we need to code it in two places. We need the elif for that. So if it's negative, we want that. We want this bit here as well. If it's negative, we want to do last number take away what's in the box and print it out let's see if that works 10 take away 2 8 plus 6 14 take away 88 minus 74 right so plus and minus is working let's do multiply and divide i think we've got this crack now so we can probably do it in one go i'm going to change the rows of these so the next row down Check the buttons go in the right place. Yeah, looks good. Let's deal with those LFs now. It looks like there's a lot of inefficiency here, to be perfectly honest. There's a lot of repetition in these that we can take out. We might do that in a moment, um, once we know it's working. There's definitely a lot of repetition here that we can take out. But again, one of the key things is make sure the thing works first. And if it definitely works, then you can start simplifying it. 10 multiplied by 2 divided by 10. And I am getting floats coming up there, but that's okay. Let's see if we can simplify this then. So if we can, if we want to simplify it, we look for all the repetitions. So last number equals answer. That happens every single. Right, where is it? Um, last number equals answer. That happens every single time. So that can go there. Answer equals zero happens every single time as well. So that can go there. And the reason that's going there is because that's happening before all the operations. So I can take that out of each one. Updating the, the this happens after the if statement. So that can go in here and be unindented. So that happens every single time. So now I don't need that anymore. And you can see I'm just looking for the repetitions and removing them. And that makes that bit of code much nicer. Let's check it still works there. 5 plus 3 equals times 6 equals divided by 4 equals take away 2 equals looks good so let's look for similar repetition here uh, you'll see that these first this first line is different each time but these bottom two are the same so let's take these bottom two out and then I can whip them out of each time we've got them there we go and that's just a bit easier to read let's check this still works 5 plus 3 equals times 6 take away 8 divided by 10 and boom we've got a working calculator now that's pretty good it's not the prettiest thing in the world but it does everything you'd want it to do and of course you could extend it a little bit by saving those results maybe into a database having a, a clear button or a store button to store those inf pieces of information a bit wider there's a lot of code there there's almost a hundred lines of code for not very much in the output here